How's it going? Fox again for Sound Design Tutorials. I had a request about three or four weeks ago now uh, of how to set up the Access Forest TI in Ableton. I've been messing my studio around, changing bits and bobs, so I haven't done any tutorials for a while. So this is the first one I'm going to be doing now. It's all set up again. So first thing you need to do once you've bought a virus, once you've saved up enough pennies to buy a virus, and you've got it home all happy and it's unwrapped on your desk, you need to make sure that it's up to date. If it's brand new, then you're going to need to do this anyway. If it's second hand, it's always advisable to make sure that you're up to date with the drivers and that the firmware within the virus itself is up to date as well. So what you need to do to do that is you need to go to the Access Music homepage, which is this one. I'll do the link for the homepage in the description so you can navigate to it easily enough. You need to uh, register your virus. To do that, you need to go to Support register and then follow the steps for that. Once it's registered and you've created an account with Access you can then download the relevant drivers for what you need. So you go to this tab, the Downloads tab, click on it uh, and then download the relevant driver for what you're doing. Uh, at the minute I'm running Windows 64 bit so this is the one that I, I use. You click on the download button. The current version at the minute is 5.0.8 so yeah obviously say so click on the download button sign into your account with your email and your password that you made when you register your virus and it will download. Once you've done that you'll end up with this, it comes in a zip file and so use whatever software you got to open it, I'll use WinRAR double click the installer run it and then just follow it step by step and it's really easy to do, I mean I won't do it because obviously mine's set up and it'll it'll conflict things but say it's step by step it asks you where you want to install the control plugins for the 32-bit and 64-bit versions and it'll uh, at a certain point it'll ask you to turn your virus on just do exactly what it says and then it'll update the firmware within the virus you get some bonus patches and stuff with the uh, with the latest update so yeah once you've done that and you made sure that your virus is all up to date then you can open Ableton up plug your virus in for the USB port it specifies in the manual that you should try and keep the virus plugged into its own USB socket on its own. I didn't really understand it. I think it's because it it doesn't really use that much juice because obviously the virus deals with everything itself inside it. So it's not really CPU intensive, but it passes the audio and the MIDI through the USB. So it advises you to try and keep it in a hub on its own. I mean, I've got eight different USB sockets on the back of my PC because I built it myself, and they all go into one hub. So it's it's not an impossible to do that. But I've never had any problems with it being plugged into a hub with other anything else. I've had other simps plugged into it as well and other keyboards. And it runs fine. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But what you need to do to set it up in Ableton then, first you need to go to Preferences. So Options, Preferences. On a Mac it'll be the uh, the Virus tab and then it still, still labels as Preferences. So yeah, Options, Preferences. Go into MIDI Sync. This is where you turn on the options to pass MIDI in and out through the virus into Ableton. So yeah, because I've got the... I can't remember, I had the snow before I had the polar. I can't remember whether this virus synth shows up with the snow or not. But either way, you need the first two boxes checked for, for all. For vir for this one, input 2, virus T, MIDI, you need track and sync on. I have it on for the synth as well. As I say, I can't really remember if that's with the snow or not. Output on and on, virus T, I synth output on and on so make sure the first four boxes are checked in these two lanes and that will allow the virus to talk to Ableton yeah, that means you can also use it then to play any other synth that you got massive whatever you can use it as a MIDI keyboard if you have a keyboard with your virus so yeah once that's done you're ready to go uh, one thing I will say quick as well you, every virus comes with well every TI virus comes with a sound card built in you can use it as a main sound card for your door um, I know this works ever so well with a virus because the reason I haven't done any videos for a while is because I've been trying to find a new sound card that, to fit and suit in my studio and it's been nigh and impossible. Um, my old sound card, which I'm back using again, is the Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. While I was buying, I bought two or three, I've ended up sending them back. While I was trying to find another one that could work well for me with all my recording and stuff, I was using a virus as a main sound card and it was it was awesome. No pops, no clicks. The latency was excellent. So don't be afraid to use that as your sound card if you need, because I say it really is a, a, a decent bit of kit. A lot better than some specific sound cards that I bought. I'm not going to mention any names, but 
I bought two well known well known brands and uh they both of them were no good. One of them wouldn't wouldn't allow me to have the sound coming out of my door and from uh, something else at the same time, like YouTube or whatever, which is useless. And another one didn't give me any options for when I was doing my screen recording, didn't give me any options to record the system audio, which, again, absolutely useless. So, yeah, virus, all in all, if you ain't got one, buy one. So, yeah, you need to navigate to where your your plugins are, and your plugins folder, I, I made a... Uh, folder specifically called Access Music. Once this is set up, you never need to do it again because you can just save it as a template. As I say, I'm using the Voris TI, so you drag that over. It'll create a MIDI track with the Voris TI loaded on it. Takes a while first time you do it. Okay, that's it. I mean, you can now pretty much just straight away start playing away if you want with the Voris. Once you've turned it on, click OK. OK. That's it, you're ready to go. As long as the track time, you can just use it as one track. It'll always use whatever. Oh, I think it uses just number one by the look of it. But the reason you buy a virus, well, for me, is because you can do multi track recording. I mean, with the TI, you've got 16 here. But via the USB, you can only have three. So I always use these first two one, two, and three, which makes sense. So yeah, this one you want to leave on its own. Turn this off. Just mute it. Just leave it run. It just sort of hosts the plugin for you to run everything else through. So now we need to create three more MIDI tracks to correspond to these th the first three slots that we're going to use. So if you control shift T, that does a MIDI track. Click on it, control DD, that duplicates it three times. I'm just going to rename these three quickly. MIDI 1, MIDI 2, Do that. MIDI three. We'll get there in the end. MIDI three. So you can colour code these whatever you want. I always do these three the same colour so that I remember that they're the MIDI tracks. As I say, for the MIDI in the first slot. You need to click on this box here. You want all ins and all channels. This means that anything is going to be able to send MIDI to the virus, whether you've got other external, whether you've got a launch pad or whatever, or a, and a, what's the, a Ableton Push or another MIDI keyboard. If you've just got the snow, then you need to be able to play what you, what you want on the uh, virus. So, yeah, you want all ins and all channels. That means anything, you can use anything to play the notes on the virus, which is what we want. And then for this first one, you need to make sure that box is on auto. You want to send that output to this to Virus TI, which is the sleeper one where, where it all is. So you click on that. And then the, the second box needs to be one Virus TI. This corresponds to this one here, one Virus TI. You can rename this if you want to make it easier for when you're, when you're locating for this. I think on mine I've just got it as Virus in capitals so then when you check in this box it stands out above all the others so the second one exactly the same all ins all channels the output virus which is this sleeper channel two virus ti the third one all ins all channels virus three virus ti this now means that each one of these channels is going to correspond to this one here. So if you want to apply MIDI to number two, you draw it in the MIDI two box. If you want to apply different, well, you will if you've got three separate tunes and three separate tracks running. If you want to apply something different to number three, you'd obviously draw the MIDI in number three, and then that corresponds to it. We now need to set up three audio channels to receive the audio from these. Because at the minute, look, you're not hearing anything. That Because the way the virus works, because it's a hardware synth, it does not transfer audio via MIDI. You need to set three audio channels to correspond to these three MIDI channels so you can record it in. You can't keep it in the MIDI domain like, as, or as I say, Massive or any other soft synth like that. Once you've got to a point where you're happy with the sounds that you've made and the MIDI notes and everything, you need then to bounce it down to audio. The best way I've found to do that is to create three audio tracks to do exactly the same. All three of them are going to do exactly the same, but we need to correspond them to each 
track respectively what we want them to be. So once I've set these up so they're nice and neat, yeah, we'll rename this first one Audio One, second one Audio Two, third one Audio Three. As I say, best to assign them all the same colour, keep it nice and neat. I use red on mine. Now we need to set up for these to listen to each channel individually. So the first one in the top box, you need to click on the vi where it says the virus, which is that sleeper one again. This first one stays on pre effects. This box, you can uh, say on it, well, I've got mine grouped, but you can keep it on master at the minute. When you group it, it'll change it to that, so keep it on a master. Audio 2 for the second one is the virus again. This one is 2 virus TI, which is the second channel. Don't ask me why the first one doesn't come up as uh, 1 virus TI on these audio boxes. I'll never really understand that, but make sure it says virus and pre FX. Audio 3 is the virus. 3 virus TI and you need to change all of these to in so they're receiving the audio from the MIDI channels now if we you should here okay one thing we need to do quick as well inside the virus this is now to correspond to each one of these to their individual channel is for number one you need to go to the common section and you want the main out as USB 1 left and right. That means that it's going to use the uh, MIDI channel 1 to channel its MIDI and its audio through. Number 2, you need to change this to USB 2 left and right. And then number 3, you need to change to USB 3 left and right. That is the three audio channels that obviously correspond to these MIDI channels that we've set up. So if we quickly load some patches for each one of these different, I'll just load some of my patches quick. So we've got three different patches on there. I'll show you how you can switch between the two. So yeah, I mean when you're in Ableton now, to select, all you need to do to select which one you're hearing is just arm it. So the first one. Hyper saw that I did. Second one, the electro bass. Three, click on that arm three. Nice floaty app. So, yeah. In regards for the basic setup, that's pretty much it. The only thing I do to keep it all nice and neat is I group these. So if you click on the top one with that sleeper track where we've got the plug-in loaded, hold shift, get down to the bottom of the last audio track, control G, it groups it, control R, just name this virus again or whatever you want. I set, always set my groups to white. That way you can open and close it. One thing I did, in case I ever mess around with my patches, is go to my user library, created a new folder called Virus, and then click on this, dragged it over, and then dropped it in there. So if you see, if I delete this now, I've got this all set up here. So yeah, I had that already set up. This is how I've got mine set up inside mine. Exactly the same as what I showed you. Good, work, good thing to do that is to make sure that you've got it up for a later date. Because if you ever update to a different version of live or you try the beta ones, then you're going to need to set it all up again. So yeah, once it's set up, you're good to go. As I say, I'll just show you, I'll just draw some MIDI in quick and show you how, about how to record. So it's really straightforward. I ain't got no idea what this is going to sound like, but who cares? It's just going to have some sound that we can record. So we'll go into the virus. 
put a sound on number one quick. So yeah, once you've got your MIDI all drawn in, whether you played it in or worked it out or whatever, all you do to record from that is arm the relative audio track from the virus. So obviously audio one, because we've got the MIDI with the MIDI for track one. And then record, and you're away. There you have it, now you've got your virus in audio. What I'll normally do now is create another audio track. Leave this all set up as you are. I'll normally create another audio track. Well, in my default, in my Ableton default uh, set, I've got loads of audio tracks stuck up anyway. So I'll create another audio track so I can just drag it or copy and paste it. from there into its own lane. Now you can apply whatever effects or whatever you want to it. I suppose I'll best go through automation quick as well. Because the virus, you can't, for some reason with the virus, you can't apply automation to each individual part. You can only apply it to the master, which is this up here. So yeah, say for instance, if you wanted to uh, modulate the filter cutoff, which pretty much you are good, definitely going to do if you're making any serious music. So yeah, you can just, you have to modulate it per, not per channel. It, it will do it for every single instance that you've got open of this. So if I had all three, if I had three of these stacked up here, if I had three, all three parts running at once, three different sounds, whatever modulation you do is going to affect all three parts. So it's best to just move the ones that you don't want. When, when you come to doing modulation, do your modulation and then bounce it through that way. As I say, it's just a simple filter sweep so you can hear it. When you record that in, then it will show the modulation, you'll hear the modulation in the recording as well. Yeah, really straightforward when you get used to it. I mean, it does take a while to get used to how it works. It's a bit of a ball ache having to bounce it down to audio, but once you've got the virus and you've been playing for it for a while, you will realise it is well, well worth it. One other thing I will say, because you've got these each individual audio tracks corresponding to, uh, to each MIDI channel, you can apply effects to these individually. Like you can apply uh, EQs to these or compressors or whatever you want. So, for instance, if I quickly bounce this to audio again, so yeah, I had the effect on that. You should be able to hear what that did. Actually, I made a mistake there. What I'll normally do is I'll duplicate the track. Once you've, got the, once you've got any effects on the track that you want, when it comes to moving it over, I always duplicate that track or, cop or copy it exactly. Then you've got the effect stacked up because it doesn't record the effects on the audio channel because there is an effect affecting it afterwards. But as I say, yeah, it gives you the option to see what it's going to sound like with the effects on it. And then as I say, if you just control, drag that down to there, duplicate it and you've got all the effects that you had on there set up already. Right, one other thing that the virus can do, which I might go over in a different tutorial, I think I will actually. So yeah, another thing the, the virus can do is it can pass audio through itself. You can pass audio through the virus and have it affected by everything, well, and everything after the filters. So you can put filters on it, LFOs. I don't know whether you can use the app or not, but all the effects and that. But yeah, that's for another tutorial. But yeah, for now anyway, thanks for watching. That is how to set up the virus within Ableton Live 9. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe up here if you want it. Cheers, bye.